Call me back. Call me back tomorrow. Huh? Renee, Renee, are you sleeping? Hello? Are you sleeping? Oh. Oh, no, Mike. Hey, no. What, what were we talking about? Yeah, no, no. I, yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, sorry. It's the same story every year. I'm, I'm the dog advocate. We hear every story. I get 20 or 30 calls a day that I have to tell people, no, I can't take your dog. Here's what you should do and try to keep your dog. And our focus mostly is still helping the dogs that are abused or in animal shelters because they're so overwhelmed and we have so many contacts, you know, statewide and internationally that the animal shelters don't they don't have a lot of resources and they can't hold them long just because of space issues. So those are our priority. Little Miss Mickey, she likes to, she was a dog fighting dog, so she gets solitary confinement. She's not a cuddler? No, she's not a cuddler. I, oh, look at you, you're a little cute. Whoa, she got reflex, see the reflex? Uh, we have some escape artists and part of our job out here in the sanctuary is when we're cleaning up we see if there's any scout escape routes and it looks like and since we've weeded the fence we see where they've tried to escape through the fence. Oh, on that side, yeah, I see this. You know what, I think this side they're okay. Yeah. Yeah, oh, look, donated food. Chicken soup for the dog, for the soul. Yeah, this whole place is donations. This whole place is donations. And we're so blessed. Um, we have our, our usual wonderful benefactors, you know, and maybe later you can show the picture behind you. We, we got those 40 cases of canned food that have lasted us a few years and they donated. And food, food is $40 a bag. You know, we couldn't feed 60 dogs a day if we didn't have these wonderful supporters. So, you know, everything that we generate from Mats and martinis <laughs> um, goes to the care, the everyday care of these animals, and we have our fund for completing this building. You know, the, the ultimate goal, which is happening year by year, is we will be able to house more dogs. As far as cost savings, the, having an actual uh, medical facility here will just facilitate not having to go into a facility. We're at the veterinarian every day somewhere, every day. 
whether it's in Vacaville, Woodland, Sacramento, we're always hauling dogs around somewhere every day. Just a day in the life. Yep, yeah, just a day in life. Here we go. Just came home from the vet. Perfect timing. Um, brought a dog into the vet today that was dumped off in my neighbor's driveway a couple of days ago. And uh, the dog was injured, and two guys in a blue pickup truck were seen throwing him out at the end of their driveway. Anyway, we named him Trooper, and this is Trooper's uh, debut at home. He's gonna come out, and he's wearing diapers and a cone, and, uh, but he should have a really good new start. He's very sweet and adopted. Honey. Yeah, give me a kid. Yeah, he rode home in the front seat of the car. Hoi horny. Hoi horny. Rots of Friends is an animal rescue. The majority of our animals are obviously dogs and cats, but this year we had a pretty exciting rescue. A, a fisherman called us out of the blue from locally here in Puda Creek in Davis, and they, they found a sheep. It was actually drowning in a fishing hole way down in a bank and couldn't get out so we drove out into the boondocks we had to take dirt roads and climb some gates and there were these two kids that were fishing and they hiked us down and there was a sheep about 30 feet down a ditch bank stuck in a in the river and it would have drowned by the time we rigged up ropes and we have some pretty dramatic video so, of it have we got most of the weight under her butt I'm trying to okay <laughs> here at least you've got Let's see, how can we help here? Can we get her butt up here? She'd been in that water probably for a couple of days. She was hypothermic and cold and um, we recovered her and, and that was our big sheep rescue of the year. Oh yeah, I, I got one more dog I forgot to tell you about, Wilton. He ended up staying with me because I love this dog, but he's probably asleep because he's deaf and he never hears anything. But let's have a peek. Uh-oh. He is cute. Look like me when I woke up. <laughs> Hi, Wilton. Hi, handsome. Did you just wake up, sweetheart? Wilton was found drowning in the town of Wilton. And he was in a pond for over six hours. And the, he was so hyperthermic and they thought he was dead. They pulled him out and they took him to the emergency clinic. And it took hours for him to get revived. Um, and he survived, but I love him. Look how cute he is. I love him. The seventh graders did a, a project where they donated to their favorite rescue. And um, they took Wilton. We took Wilton and he had all these kids climbing all over him. He's so cute. Hey, you want to go in the yard? Come on, Wilton. Yep. Come here, buddy. Wilt. So he was my gym for the year. Every... Every year or two, a dog ends up clicking with me immediately, and he's just one that I absolutely fell in love with. He just has this very soulful look about him and a story, you know, like, how did this happen? We have no clue. One of our, our more endearing and enlightening things this year, you know, because these two women that are rescuing dogs in Iran, it's. You know, we get all the people that criticize, why are you helping dogs out of the country? Well, it's just so rewarding knowing that even if it's only one or two dogs that you're doing something, you know, that good. Do something. The rescue is in Iran. If you are in Iran and you are seen walking a dog, you will have that dog taken away from you. If you do your research, you'll know that Iran is not a real dog-friendly country. So we've got a close connection with these young ladies who are literally risking their lives to uh, rescue dogs off the street. And it's quite difficult for them to get them out of the country. There's a lot of paperwork, there's a lot of politics, there's a lot of bribery, there's all kinds of safety issues. But the main thing is they have to have passengers to bring these animals. So she's got about 30 dogs she's trying to get to safety. And, um, but we hope that we can get Angel and Linda over here real soon.
<laughs> here comes, here comes Angel. Say hi, Angel. Say hi, everybody. Hello. We've been waiting a So here he time. is. Hello. All the way from Iran. Lots of hours on the plane, but he's a, he's a nice boy. Huh, you've been through a lot. Nice shepherd mix of some sort. So this is what it's all about, um, helping these animals, whether it's in America or um, anywhere. And you know, he's why we spend our money and, and what, it, what our cause is about. So however you guys can help us, we appreciate it. This is what it goes for. And uh, they certainly appreciate it. So thank you for all your continued support. Oh, I need support. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Angel. Let's go, buddy. Good boy. Good job, Angel. Tomorrow will be the scene of 25 cement trucks filling in this area. It's been seven years, long waiting. And then all of a sudden we're gonna have cement. Ta -da! Here it is! We can't believe it! They say everything's gonna be <laughs> alright. Everything's gonna be alright. And nobody's gotta worry about nothing. Don't go hitting that. Everything's gonna be alright Everything's gonna be alright And nobody's gotta worry about nothing Don't go hitting that panic button It ain't near as bad as you think Everything's gonna be alright Bungie, Bungie, don't ignore me. You want to go to Mutz and Martinis?